Okay, everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. This is a story of a dude getting robbed. The attackers locked themselves inside a motorcycle club filled with people, and the police think they like gathered together a small army to get them out. We are in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, and let's flip this around and we'll get into it. Okay, so clearly we are in a pretty industrial part of Brooklyn, Sunset Park. I'm gonna go down this dead end because we're right on the water. Maybe we'll get a cool view. But the address that we're going to is 5710 3rd Avenue. This incident happened March 31st, 2018. It was a Saturday, but I really think it was, it happened at 7.20 in the morning. So 7.20 in the morning, a 43 year old dude. There's not too much info out on this. I wish there was more. Wow, look at this building that's falling apart. Oh, I might have to go in there. Oh, we're going in there. We're going in there. Okay, one second here. This truck couldn't make a U-turn on an eight lane highway. got my boots on today, I'm ready. Okay, as we walk through here, I'll explain. So this used to be like where they held the salt. And I'm guessing that's why this whole roof, oh, one second, I have a flashlight. If you guys could feel the size of this place, but it's kind of like an open. Oh my god! I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of concerned this might collapse on me. I'm gonna guess it's like 50 feet tall. It's kind of creepy. Hey, you see the salt all stacked up? So it was probably stacked close to the ceiling in this place. Okay, set out of the truck, back in the truck. Okay, quick little detour, back to the story. 7.20 a.m., five guys run up on a 43-year-old guy and rob him and pistol whip him. Then they run like around three blocks and I don't know if they knew that they could run into the club or if it was just a door that was open so they jump in there. But it's the motorcycle club belonging to the B-Jack Motorcycle Club. B-E-J-A-C. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I'm going to be pronouncing it. So they go in there. They run in. There's like 75 other people in there partying. Now, when you see the pictures, they're not bikers. What the club used to do is they would rent out the spot as an event space. Which the neighbors didn't really like because they would get really rowdy and they'd be going till late hours of the night, whatever. I mean, this party was going on at 7.20 in the morning. So I'm assuming it went on from Friday night. I could be wrong on that, but that's just what I'm guessing. Why would everyone be partying there? So they go there. They close themselves in. Of course, the cops get called. The cops show up and the cops demand to come inside. They don't open the doors. Now, I don't know the situation that's going on inside the club while this is all happening. I don't know if they knew the people in the club, like I said, but they lock themselves in there and the cops want to get in. And when the cops want to get in somewhere, they get in. So, about a dozen cop cars pull up, SWAT comes, NYPD's emergency service unit shows up, armored police trucks, and the Hercules unit, Hercules team. I never looked up what that was. I'm gonna tell you in one second. Wow, where'd that car appear from? Okay, uh, they are a counter-terrorism unit. You'll see them around the Empire State Building, the Brooklyn Bridge, Times Square, or the New York Stock Exchange, uh, or wherever intelligence reports say they are needed on that day. They have air and sea support if they need it 
they're there to be intimidating, to intimidate terrorists away from New York. And it's a model for other states and cities to create those teams also. They carry a 233 uh, round, uh, an AR-15, or a shotgun with 300 rounds, a pistol with 150 rounds, a first aid kit, door wedges, um, a rope, a pocket mirror, or a selfie stick on every patrol. Uh, the guys that are more serious, which in the NYPD is very serious about them, they have Kevlar helmets, armor plate vests, flashbangs, smoke grenades, and ballistic shields. I did not think they were that crazy. Wow, I just wrote that down without looking into it. And there you go. So, they're there also. Uh, police snipers were actually asking the upper floor neighbors of the surrounding people to set up snipers in the windows. And then told all the people, because everyone's curious, they're popping their heads out, they got their phones out and stuff. The police are telling people, get away from your windows just in case there's a shootout. You won't get caught in a crossfire. One witness said he was actually walking his dog and saw the armored truck about to burst in, like aiming at the, the doors of the place. And it rammed the doors as he's walking his dog. Can you imagine that? They had this whole entire street blocked off. This is a big road. We're under the Gowanus. No. We're under the Bell Parkway right now. But, uh, yeah, they rammed the doors at this place. It was a crazy scene. Cops don't show out like that for anything uh, minor, you know? The doors actually didn't come down, but they did do damage. And then, after almost two hours of a standoff with police, they eventually came out and surrendered. At least 75 people were inside, so they were all lined up outside. I'll show you pictures of that. I'll show you the pictures. I wish there were more pictures and videos available of this because it's such a it sounds like such a crazy scene, but the stuff that I have is pretty intense. Um, they arrested the five people, and I believe only those five people were arrested. Now, I don't know what ended up happening to these people. If they got charged, if they got off, I don't know. If anyone knows, please let me know. Okay, so they're, it's coming up here. It's the most unsuspecting little door. That graffitied metal door. I'm gonna pull up and we'll walk back here. I don't wanna block this up. Shop. out on here so right here you'll see in the pictures that I show you'll see this little mailbox and this door just to show that I'm at the right spot this was obviously up and the doors are right there you can see the glass broken the cops in front of it you could see three motorcycles still parked outside the place right here now they weren't allowed to go in the place right away because they didn't have a search warrant, which sounds kind of crazy, but they waited. They got a search warrant fast because situations like that you do. But can you imagine this scene? Look at this road I'm going to aim at right now. That was blocked off fully. By the way, if you're not used to this, that's a crazy sight. We're under a parkway, the Bell Parkway. So yeah, there were probably snipers. I don't think they were up there, but maybe like there, over there. I'm not exactly sure where snipers would be. Yeah, right here, this scene all unfolding. The neighbors said that when they first moved in, oh yeah, the club started in the 90s, the D-Jacks club. Uh, when they first moved in, that they didn't bother anybody and they kept the streets kind of safe. There was a husband that said, yeah, when my wife would come home with laundry, they would help bring the bags upstairs for her. And then they said in the, in the months before this incident that uh, things were getting a little rowdy when the newer generation of people was coming in. On the weekends, they would party until like 3 a.m. and getting fights and arguments outside. A big to-do, you know? Let's 
fit back in the truck. Everyone check out my light setup. I'm very proud of my lights, by the way. It blinds everyone on the road, but it's all for you guys. Oh, and those two little ones aren't on the bottom. I'll show them for you. That's the full look. All right, back to the truck. Could you imagine what it would be like to be one of these neighbors upstairs over here, hearing the commotion early in the morning on a Saturday, and then having the cops come into your apartment asking you to not look out your windows anymore because if a shootout happens, you can die, to put your phones away, and then to ask if they could set up a sniper in your bedroom to shoot out your window if there's a shootout. What a crazy thing. All right, that's pretty much everything I have to tell you about this. Follow me on Instagram at Winnie Dash Count. I post every day. Always please leave suggestions in the comments for future videos. I appreciate it very much. I will see you guys in the next one.